This lesson deals with the solution to exam number one. You can find this exam solution near the end of the ECE 201 ebook. This was a four problem test, each problem worth 25 points. I'll also show you shortly how to grade the exam. This was an actual exam given when I taught the course recently, and this is the curve. The A range was from 90 to 100, B range from 80 to 89, C range from 70 to 79, and the D range from 60 to 69. Less than or equal to 59 was not a passing score. In problem number one, you were given a plot of current flowing past a reference point versus time, as shown here, and you were asked to plot the charge transferred past this reference point versus time if you had a zero initial condition on the charge. Also, could you label levels, including maximums and minimums? Well, in chapter one, we found a relationship between charge and current, and we found that current was equal to the change in charge per unit time, or it could also be solved for that the integral of the current plus the initial condition was the value of charge. Now I've got different values for my current here. So here I've got a minus 20 milliamps, a plus 10 milliamps, and then I've got zero. So I can look at the integral in these different sections in time. So between zero and one microsecond, what I've got is a equation for the current that I could write and then I could do the integration. So I'll take the integral from zero to t and I can predict any value of charge along that interval of time uh, by evaluating the integral. I also have a zero initial condition. The minus 20 is a constant, so let's bring that out in front. So I've got the integral of one dx, and that's just equal to x evaluated from t to zero. And this is gonna be the upper limit minus the lower limit. So just minus 20 milli times t minus zero, or just minus 20 milli times t. This actually is a straight line. We call also a ramp with a negative slope. Now, because i is equal to dq dt, we can't have an instantaneous change in charge. If we did, we have to provide infinite current. So where this value ends at one microsecond will be the start for our next integration. In other words, our initial condition. So at one microsecond, I've got minus 20 milli times one micro. And so that's minus 20 times 10 to the minus three times 10 to the minus sixth. And that's 10 to the minus ninth. And our prefix for that is nano. So minus 20 nano coulombs will be our initial condition for the next interval. Let's take a look at a plot of that equation. So here's charge versus time. Start out at zero and I end at minus 20 nanocoulombs, but it's the equation of a straight line, so you just connect that up. This was worth 10 points, and basically right or wrong. Not much partial credit. In the interval from one microsecond to two microseconds, the value of current was 10 milliamps, so again, I'm gonna integrate that from one microsecond to t, where t will go up to two microseconds, and then plus my initial condition. Again, the 10 milli is a constant, so I'm gonna bring that out in front. So I got the integral of one dx, which is just equal to x, evaluated at the upper limit minus the lower limit. So let's multiply this out. So I got 10 milli times t, and then 10 milli times one micro is minus 10 nano, plus our initial condition. So I get minus 30 nano coulombs for that. This too is again the equation of a straight line. And let's find the value at the end point here when t is equal to two microseconds. Plug that in over here, and I get 20 nanoseconds minus the 30 or minus 10. So that's the point right over here. I got the equation of a straight line with a positive slope. Just connect those two up. And this two is worth 10 points, uh, either right or wrong. And lastly, for t greater than two microseconds, the value of current was zero. So the integral of zero is zero. But I do have this initial condition of minus 10 nanocoulombs. So it just continues on here for all time. This part of the problem was worth five points. Again, right or wrong. And this is problem number one on exam one. Problem number two has two parts, an A and a B. Let's take a look at part A. What I did here is I wrote down most of my steps on the schematic. I'm trying to solve for the current I1, I2, and the voltage V. All right, if I start over here at this side of the equation, I know the current entering is eight amps, and I know the current leaving here is four amps, and then I know everything but I1. One trick I like to do is just do it right on the drawing if I can here. So if I made everything enter the node, then I1 would be whatever leaves the node. So I've got eight amps entering, and I've got a minus four entering, so that's gonna give me four amps leaving. That's my equation down over here. But to find I2, I've gotta find the current in this battery. So let's go around the loop this way. I know the current leaving here is one amp. I know four amps is entering, so there's gotta be three left over. And over here, I've got two leaving, but I got three entering, so one's gotta be over here. So I've got one entering. I've got I1 entering, which is four, so this has to be equal to five. That's right over here. We'll solve for the voltage V. I'd have to find the voltage across the other elements in this loop. And I know, obviously, the battery is 3 volts, but let's find the drop across this resistor and the drop across this resistor. 
Then go around this loop here and, and take the rise in voltage and set it equal to the drops in voltage. So I have a rise in voltage of 3 times 3, a rise in voltage of V, a drop of I1 times 8, but I1 was 4, and then a drop of 3. And that's what's right over here. So I can bring this on the other side of the equation. So I've got 8 times 4 is 32, plus the 3, and then minus the 9, that's 26. These are either right or wrong, and so I gave 5 points, 5 points, and 5 points. The second problem was to find an equivalent input resistance, but to also find the intermediate steps. So combinations of series and parallel resistances. So I'm going to start over here on the right hand side. I've got 3 ohms in series with 8, so that's just 11. Then that's in parallel with 10, so I'll take the product over the sum, which is 110 over 21. That turns out to be 5.238. That's my value of R2, and that's again the resistance looking back into the circuit between these two terminals. And all of that's going to be in series with 5, it's just going to add 5 to that. Then all of that's going to be in parallel with 10, so I'll take the product over the sum of the 10.238 times 10 over 10 plus that number, and I get 5.059. So that's the value of R4, that's the resistance looking into our circuit from these two terminals. And lastly, that's in series with 8, so I'm going to add 8 to that. The points for these were just two points apiece. Again, right or wrong. If you get the first one wrong, then all the rest of them are wrong. So you need to take your time when you're doing a test. If you got the first one right, you could then get the second one right. But if you got the third one wrong, then the rest of them are also wrong. You need to work on precision and accuracy when you're doing tests. And this is problem number two. Problem number three has one circuit, but has a part A and a part B, where part B is using the results of part A. Given this circuit, knowing some of the voltages and currents, can you find the voltage V2, V3, I2, and then the resistors R1, R2, and R3? What I want to do is look for a, a loop or a node where I know all but one unknown. Take a look at this node right here. I have the current entering is 4. I've got 6 leaving, and i got I2 leaving. So I could solve for I2. I could do it on the drawing, or I could do it here on the side. So I took 4 amps entering was equal to what was leaving, which was I2 plus 6. So then I2 was equal to minus 2. I look at this loop over here, I know the voltage across the battery. I don't know V3, but I do know the voltage V1. So the rise in voltage is 20, the drop is V3, and the drop is V1, which is equal to 8. So I could then solve for V3, which is equal to 12. I could also go around this loop here. I know everything but one voltage. So the rise in voltage is 13, the rise in voltage is V2, and the drop is equal to 8. So I could solve for V2. That would be equal to minus 5. Okay, now knowing the voltages and the currents, I could solve for the resistances. The resistor R1 here, I've got the voltage and the current, so that's equal to the ratio of those two, which is 1.33 ohms. The resistor R2, I found the voltage across here, V2, which was minus 5 volts, and then found that the current was equal to minus 2 amps, so I get 2.5 ohms. For R3, which is over here, I found the voltage V3 was equal to 12 volts, and the current is equal to 4. Each of these was worth two points. Now, knowing the voltage and the current for each element, I could find the power absorbed by each element. And that's part B. So for the 20 volt source, I had a current coming into its plus terminal as minus four. So that's minus 80 watts. The 13 volt source at 13 volts and the current coming into its terminal was I2, but I2 was equal to a minus two amps. So it's absorbing minus 26 watts. So in both cases here, these are generating power. Power absorbed in my resistor R1 would be the voltage across it and the current through it. We found that the voltage was equal to 8 volts and the current was equal to 6 amps, and that's 48 watts. The resistor R2 had a voltage across it of minus 5 volts and had a current going through it of minus 2 amps, and that's a plus 10 watts. Again, absorbing power is only what a resistor can do. And lastly, for resistor 3, I found that the voltage across it was 12, and the current flowing through it was equal to 48 watts. And when you add all those up, you actually get equal to zero. I followed mistakes through from the first part through through here. But many of these answers you could get with just using the values that were on the schematic, and particularly this one right here, the result has to equal zero by the conservation of power. This is problem number three. Problem number four had two problems on it. Let's take a look at the first one here. Given this current source in parallel with the resistance, could you express that as a series combination of a voltage V and a resistance R? This is our source transformation, but because of the polarity here, I have to have the current pointing in this direction. So you could rewrite that as minus 7 milliamps in parallel with 4. 
Then the source transformation, we then multiply the current times the resistance, and you get minus 28 volts, and then the resistance is the same value of 4K. These are worth eight points apiece, no partial credit. The second problem was looking at a delta and finding one of the resistors in the Y. I drew the uh, Y inside of the delta so I could use my inspection algorithm. The resistor R sub X is equal to the product of the two resistors that are connected to the same node over the sum of the three. So it's 10 plus 12 plus five. That's 120 over 27, 4.44 ohms. Again, this was either right or wrong, it was worth nine points. And this is exam number one.